Welcome to Motory Monday for December 15th, 2014. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I'm sorry if you missed us for the past couple of weeks. I had a bit of a head injury that took a couple of weeks to heal and I wasn't quite ready to be on camera here for y'all. It just didn't look too pretty, but I really did miss you guys. So this week we've got some hot news from Mercedes-Benz Cadillac and Mini. Better yet, my Ford Touch might just be gone forever. All this in our test drives. It's coming right up. Well, making its official debut at the North American International Auto Show next month, Mini gives us a sneak peek of their hottest hardtop yet, the John Cooper Works. Known for performance and sport character well above the Mini Cooper S, the John Cooper Works for 2015 won't disappoint, sporting a much more powerful engine than all the performance goods buyers expect. Under the hood is the largest engine yet in a Mini, a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder with some 228 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. Mini says it will blast the hardtop from 0 to 60 in as fast as 5.9 seconds. A 6-speed manual transmission with computer-aided rev matching as well as a 6-speed Steptronic automatic transmission will be available with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Mini says the automatic is actually the quicker of the two. Bringing all that power to terms are larger brakes from Brembo with signature red calipers. These are wrapped with standard 17-inch John Cooper Works track alloy wheels or larger optional 18-inch John Cooper Works cup two-tones. Suspension, of course, gets a full makeover with lighter components for better steering and power delivery. Stiffer dampers and springs go without saying, all giving the car a harder edge on the track. You can option for a standard suspension, however, as a no-cost option. You also get a full exterior aerodynamic package and visuals to make the car look meaner as well as treat the air as such when you blast down the straight at high speeds. Inside, unique sports seats, trims, and accoutrements complete the theme. The Mini John Cooper Works hardtop will be arriving in dealerships a little later next year with a price tag, you guessed it, a little bit higher than the Mini Cooper S. Cadillac is pushing the high performance button with the new ATS-V, the next in a long line of V-Series branded products. And this one has something a little different under the hood. For the first time, Cadillac brings us a full tilt V without the V8. The new ATS-V sedan taps the power of the 3.6 liter twin turbo V6 and for the first time offers it with a manual transmission. Making even more power than the CTS V Sport, the ATS V gets a hotter version of the twin turbocharged V6, churning out a whopping 455 horsepower and 445 pound feet of torque. That extra power comes from turbochargers with low inertia titanium aluminide turbines and vacuum actuated wastegates. Additionally, lightweight titanium connecting rods reduce inertia of the rotating assembly, enabling faster revs. The Cadillac ATS-V is available with the aforementioned 6-speed manual transmission which has computer-aided rev matching. You can also option an 8-speed automatic box with paddle shifters if you wish not to deal with that pesky lever. How fast is it? Cadillac says it will roll from 0 to 60 in as little as 3.9 seconds with a top speed of more than 185 miles an hour. Um yeah, that's fast. Handling all that power was taken seriously with a number of structural enhancements to the body, stiffening it by some 25% with additional bracing added to the front and rear suspension mounts, shock towers, and bulkheads. Substantial aerodynamic add-ons not only bring additional visual appeal to the car, but significantly add downforce at speed for those who actually take it to the track, and for them, an optional track aerodynamic package can be had. Now, just like you, I can't wait to drive one of these things, and I will be getting that opportunity sometime next year. We'll be bringing you a full report when that happens. Just when you thought Mercedes-Benz had enough crossover sport utilities in their lineup, this week they introduced the all-new GLE Coupe. What is it? Well, first let's get our naming structure right. The GLE Coupe is based on the GLE crossover SUV, which is formerly known as the M-Class. So think M-Class with a coupe roof line, but four doors. Thus, this is a mid to large sizer, which is best said to compete with the BMW X6, which also considers itself a coupe in the crossover segment. Confused yet? To the point, the Mercedes-Benz GLE Coupe will come to North America as a full-tilt 450 AMG Formatic. It'll have a 3.0-liter twin-turbo V6 producing 362 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque, mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission. 
Being a coupe, it'll come fully loaded with a dynamic handling control system, sport direct steer system, and a full docket of driver assistance systems to go along with its standard all-wheel drive. A newly designed Airmatic air suspension will be available with a continuously variable damping system as will be an active curve system with active roll stabilization. Multiple drive modes will be available to allow you to tailor the behind the wheel feel. As this is an upper end Mercedes Benz model, you can expect top notch interior trims with plenty of color and finish options. A basic black cabin can be had or two tones with ginger beige, crystal gray, saddle brown, or porcelain. You can also opt for an exclusive Napa leather treatment with diamond pattern stitching, leather instrument and door panel trim, and a black suede headliner. Nice! Suffice it to say, there's way too much about this vehicle to list here today, but if you really want to spend more money for less headroom in your crossover, well, you have a new choice coming later next year. In our test drives this week, we sampled some German crossover goodness with the 2015 Audi Q3, and we did it right, taking it on a road trip to Sedona, Arizona. Audi's Q3 is the entry point for the brand's sport utility lineup starting in the low 30,000s. Sharing its architecture with the well-sorted Volkswagen Tiguan, it's about the same size and shares its 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine. It stands apart, however, with a total Audi quality experience from the inside out with a top-notch interior and exterior style that befits its extra pricing. Handling and driving poise were the takeaway from our stints on the highway and it was off-road where the Audi Q3 continued to impress as we trekked to the back roads of Sedona into the Red Mountains. The high clearance enabled the kind of exploration you buy this vehicle for without beating you to death with a harsh ride. We also drove this week the Chevrolet Colorado Z71, an all-new entry in the mid-size pickup market, an arena Toyota and Nissan have had to themselves for the past few years. With an all-new design, modern engines, and more technology, it promises to challenge them well. The Colorado impressed with a spacious and modern interior which offers plenty of comfort as well as infotainment technologies. Chevrolet's MyLink system is top notch and easy to use with lots of connectivity options. On the highway and off road, the Colorado proved to be much more easier to live with in terms of maneuverability and handling than a full size truck. Build quality is still American in scope, but proves solid as a rock on the washboard back roads. Now, I like both of these vehicles well enough that they made it on my iBuy list for 2014. I like them that much. Now, you can see more detailed reviews of these and many others on testdriven.tv or our YouTube channel. In a reality check this week, you always hear me bashing Ford's My Ford Touch system when we review Ford cars because it's distracting behind the wheel, very difficult to use. Well, You'll suffer this, no more. This week Ford announced an all new HMI or human machine interface called Sync 3 which will in the next year begin replacing the optional My Ford Touch system which has earned the ire of car owners and journalists alike. With Sync 3 it gets a new name because the My Ford Touch branding now has about as much positive equity as the Ford Pinto, Pontiac Aztec or Mazda's rotary engine. You say My Ford Touch and buyers run from the lots. The system itself is all new with a QNX based software language losing the Microsoft Auto operating system. Backing it up is a new and more robust hardware for graphics from Texas Instruments. Menus and graphics are light and bright with a new layout that brings most common uses to the top level, those being audio, navigation and communications. No more are critical functions buried several levels down. Ford says the new system is faster responding to the touch and much less distracting behind the wheel than my Ford Touch. Voice commands are also said to be more intuitive, requiring less structured verbal ovations. It uses keywords more strongly than exact terms. You can say, for instance, Detroit Airport for NavSearch instead of its full proper name, Detroit Metropolitan Airport. It'll spend a moment or two to figure you out. This may actually be the best thing Ford's done in a while. Actually listen to us. After all, we are customers, we do know what's good. I'll bring you a full report on this system as soon as I get my hands on one. Now, it's time for our money shot, where we take the best photo from this week's press releases and we show it to you. Infinity teases us with an image of the Q60 concept, which will make its debut at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit next month. The coupe promises to arrive in production form at some point, likely to challenge the new RC coupe from Lexus for lustful style and exhilarating performance.
Well, folks, that is it for Motoring Monday. But before you go, I've got a very special announcement to make right here on the show in just two weeks, Monday, December 29th. So if you're not here next week, make sure to be here then because I've got something very exciting to share. You can click on this link right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel there. I'll keep you updated on that as well as all of our test drives and automotive news. You can also follow us on the Google, the Twitter, and that Facebook by simply searching Test Driven TV there. Or if you're on our website, Click the buttons right there. They're right there, easy to find. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.